This video is going to show you how to use the BitNinja Analytics and what each of the columns of information represents. Uh, this video goes for whether you're using Google Chrome or Mozilla Firefox since this part of the functionality of BitNinja is the same in both browsers. Uh, so first you're going to go ahead and make sure you have BitNinja installed. As long as you have BitNinja installed then go ahead and browse to quibbits.com and you can either pick an auction from Quibids directly here or you can use the forever free auction tracker that was gone over in another video. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and open up an auction. Oh, let's pick a different auction actually. <coughs> use this one. Oh, that one's locked. And as long as you have BitNinja installed, as soon as you open up the auction, you'll see the BitNinja interface and for the analytics and the BitNinja interface for the auto bidder. We won't go over the auto bidder in this video, so we'll move this off screen. And then you're going to go ahead and click login to log into BitNinja. Enter your login details and click the login button. And that brings up the BitNinja analytics interface window here. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and go over each of these columns of information. Uh, the one furthest to the left, the padlocks you see here, these indicate whether a user would be locked out of an auction or if they would not be locked out of an auction after the Quibids auction locks. Uh, so you can see a yellow locked padlock indicates a user that will not be allowed to continue to place bids if the Quibids auction locks and a yellow unlocked padlock indicates a user who would not be locked out and who would be allowed to continue to place bids if the auction were to lock. We go over all of the locked auction features in the video entitled Locked Auction Features because there are a lot more than just this and it deserved its own video. Uh, next is Quibitter. This is just the name of the bidder. Uh, this information is, looks like the auction just ended. I'll still go ahead and continue to use this. Um, the information here on the latest tab is sorted uh, in the same order the bidding history is. So I bid to win, he's the last one to have placed a bid, and you see him here, James Levon, you see that, and so on and so forth. Um, that's, so that's just the name of the bidder. Uh, the number of bids, this is the number of bidders that each bidder, each corresponding bidder has placed in total throughout the entire auction. Uh, so you can see this right down here, Quibid shows this user as having placed nine bids, and Bid Ninja shows as nine bids. This is live information, so you're shown this from the moment that you enter an auction, uh, this is all live. We're recording this information in real time, so this isn't oh, this isn't shown to you only in the past. Uh, time since last bid. That's how long it's been since they placed their last bid on this auction. Bid spend is the total amount they've spent so far on an auction. So nine bids meant that this user spent five dollars and forty cents. Uh, bids left until purchased. This column is the most in, one of the most useful columns of information. This shows you how many bids left a user has to make until they will have quote unquote purchased the item. Since Quibids has the format in place of they don't allow you to place more bids on an auction than the number of bids that would equal the retail value of that item. If this number reaches zero, that means, and they're continuing to place bids, that means they're playing with voucher bids and not real cash money bids because if they're playing with real cash money bids and this number reaches zero, that means they're no longer going to be allowed to place bids on that auction. Time on auction is how long it's been since they placed their first bid until the present time. So if this is, four, this, it was four minutes ago that this person placed their first bid, uh, and eight minutes since this person placed his, his one bid, and so on and so forth. Uh, bid type is the last bid type that they've placed, whether it were, was a single bid or an auto or a bidomatic bid. Let's go. I'm gonna go ahead and pick up right where we left off there. Uh, total number of wins is the total number of wins that this that the corresponding user has won since they joined Quibid. So this user has won 32 auctions. This user has won 69 auctions. This user has won 428 auctions, and you can actually click on each on a user and see more detailed stats about them. But again, that's a different video. Uh, total number of auctions. This is the total number of auctions a user has participated in. Voucher auctions one. This 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 is the number of voucher auctions or the number of auctions for voucher bids that a user has won. 
Uh, some users you can see are heavy, heavy voucher bid players, and that's the majority of the auctions they go after are for voucher bids. And then they'll apply. You typically use those later to win high value items. Uh, the number of voucher auctions they have lost, and then the total tracked number of voucher bids a player has used. This is important to note that this isn't all of the voucher bids a person has used because we're only able to see when a user has used voucher bids when they have won an auction. Uh, for instance, let's go to a recently ended auction. And you can see that uh, the winner, the winning bidder it always shows the number of real bids that they've used and the number of voucher bids that they've used. So this voucher bids used number is only added to when the corresponding bidder has won the auction. So Jake's to go has won this auction. If this had a voucher number in it, then it would be added to his voucher bids used number. Now, JT Jack may have used voucher bids on this auction but we don't know that because Quibids doesn't display that information unless a user has actually won. So this is more as a barometer that you can use to determine just how many voucher bids a person typically uses because it's still a good scale to go off of. If this shows a zero and a user has won a number of auctions, for instance, this user has won 31 auctions and it only shows as having 37 voucher bids used, that pretty clearly indicates that he's really a cash money player not a voucher bid player. Uh, moving along to trending stats. Actually, let's use an auction that has a lot of bids or a lot of the, 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 a lot of auctions that Quibbits holds for the same item. And we'll click on trending stats. And this will show you the number of auctions in the past two days for this item, in the past seven days for this item, so 435 15 voucher bid auctions have gone on in the past seven days. The past 90 days, 1,480 15 voucher bid auctions have gone on. And then it shows you the stats about each of these. And these are sortable. Uh, you just click on the column. And it shows you the maximum price that the item went for, which is the highest tracked dollar amount that that item sold for, in this case, the 15 voucher bids, the average price, the median, and then the minimum. Uh, daily stats. This shows you the same thing, but it's done by day of the week as opposed to uh, period of time. Uh, so on Sunday, or if you want to go ahead and sort this, I'll give you an idea. Uh, we'll sort them from least to greatest. Monday is typically when the average price is at its lowest. Moving along, click on hourly stats. This does the same thing the other two tabs did, uh, but it's done by hour of the day. Um, so we'll click on average price and sort from least to greatest, and it looks like at 4 a.m., is the time that this auction goes for the the average retail or the average selling price of this item is at its lowest at 4 a.m. for a 15 voucher bid auction and it's at its highest at 11 p.m. Uh, past auctions clicking on this tab is going to bring up a list of the past 100 auctions of this type and it's also going to display along with that information about each one so who the winning bidder was when it ended how long the auction took from start to finish, so 15 minutes, 9 minutes, 14 minutes, 8 minutes, and so on and so forth. Uh, the winning bid type, whether it was a single bid or a bid omatic bid. The win amount, uh, meaning what the dollar, what it, the item sold for. The number of bidders that were in that auction. And then lastly, how many bids the winner had to place to win that auction. Uh, next is bidding history. This shows you the entire bid timeline from start to finish. So Quibids only shows you the last 10 bids here in their, their bidding history box. Whereas you can click on bidding history within Bid Ninja and see the entire bidding history, every, every single bid from the start of the auction until the end of the auction. So if we went all the way back to page one, we could see the person who first placed a bid on this auction was Saw Cart. And then this goes all the way from one cent all the way up until its current price. Um, auction summary. This shows you the, the entire, the total number of unique bidders that have placed a bid in this auction. So there have been 19 unique players that have placed a bid on this auction since it started. It shows you its current price and then the percentage that are bid omatic bids and the percentage of regular bids. Um, you can see Quibids has since locked this auction 
and if you go back if you remember in the beginning of this video these padlocks were yellow now they're going to be green and red indicating users that have been locked out and not locked out so this auction only has 13 bidders left out of the 19 that were actually starting now there are only 13 bidders that are left allowed to continue to place bids on this auction this will again be gone over in more detail in the locked auction video uh, so that goes over every tab and every column of information within the Bid Ninja Analytics window. The next video that will that you probably want to, would want to go ahead and take a look at would be the player-specific information, which allows you to see information about each player on Quibits.